to Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is the historic Greenwood District, better known as Black Wall Street. I feel pain! A thriving African-American community once spanning 40 square blocks until the massacre of 1921. 1,256 homes burnt down. This history is recent enough that there are still three people who live through it. That horrific act of racial violence followed by decades of forced urban renewal and so-called revitalization reduced Greenwood to just one city block and destroyed generations of black wealth and prosperity. Now, 100 years later, descendants of that community are building a new legacy, and we're here to help. Our team of designers, builders, and experts are seeking out Black Wall Street descendants, entrepreneurs, and community leaders to learn about their goals for restoring their community and to help make a difference. We've enlisted husband and wife design team, Mary and John Pierre Jean Jopin, to lead our experts. I'm your host, Morris Chestnut, and together we are Rebuilding Black Wall Street. Tonight we meet Black Wall Street descendant Rachel Walker, who was on a mission to restore her family's home. We just met with Rachel, and uh, man, what a surprise. Like, that house was totally different on the inside than what we thought. It's a lot of yeah. work, it's a lot of moving pieces, but We'll see if we can help her out. Some of these pipes might need pecs. My pipes burst, so that flooded my crawl space. Somebody who complained to the city about homes that were substandard. If they take my house, where am I gonna go? I really appreciate you coming over and helping me today. My name is Rachel. I'm a public health specialist, and I'm a Tulsa native. Tulsa is special to me because of my family history. I feel like we have deep roots here in Tulsa. My grandmother would tell me stories about the 1921 race massacre and how her father put the family on a train and when he came back to get them, that she remembered the city still smoking when they got off that train. Doing this by myself has been very challenging. It's, uh, it gets tiresome, it's get, it gets stressful because this is literally probably like the fifth time I've had to snake the lines. The home that I currently live in was directly connected to the massacre because due to that massacre, the city of Tulsa made it a law that you could not build houses out of wood anymore. So when my house was built in 1937, it was specifically built in brick because it could not be built in wood. But due to the age of the home, it does come with quite a few complications. Doing it yourself definitely makes you appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. You take care of it once you achieve it. There is a really long list of things that I need or have been working on. My pipes burst, so that flooded my crawl space, getting my floors leveled, getting windows replaced, getting the stove installed, the gas lines need to be replaced. And today I am battling yet another sewage backup. Sometimes I think like maybe I could just move somewhere else, mm -hmm. it'll be easier. But then I think about the generations before me and how they kept it in the family, how they went through and they kept fixing stuff on the homes and then passed it down to me. So that keeps me going, that keeps me invested in the property. Um, so I did apply to a program that could possibly be a resource to help me out. Mm -hmm. It's called 1256 Movement. So they will grant you up to $10,000 to help with the projects you're working on. And I just have so much going on with the house. I mean, I'm just taking it step by step to do what I can do. I truly don't want to sell my home, but it's really becoming overwhelming and I want to provide a comfortable space for my daughter to grow up in. I'll come back and check on you. It has been estimated that the Tulsa Race Massacre decimated more than $200 million worth of black property. And while white business owners received insurance proceeds following the destruction, the claims of most black residents were denied. 
In 1997, a Tulsa race riot commission suggested that the state of Oklahoma pay $33 million in restitution to the 121 surviving victims who could be located. No legislative action has ever been taken. To date, all restitution efforts have fallen on the shoulders of concerned individuals and philanthropic organizations such as the 1256 Movement, who have taken up the cause to help as many descendants as they can, one family at a time. Good morning. Good morning, man. How are we going? Good. How are you? Doing well. Sorry Chuck can't join us today. He's out on a job site. Oh, he's got he's got lots to do. Gotta keep the business Clients, going. All kinds of stuff going yeah. on. Yeah. Well, I'm Chuck. And I'm Amber. And we are founders and owners of AOG Real Estate here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we're also board members with 1256 Movement. How are things with you? Good. Good. Saw my uh, grandson. How old is he now? <laughs> He's four months. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's lovely. <laughs> Greg Taylor, he's just an awesome human being. He's like our mentor. Yeah. Uh, when we started building homes, he helped us walk through that first process of building our very first house. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. I love this pattern. Look at that. This is beautiful. Oh my goodness. We began to learn that our visions for rebuilding Black Wall Street were in line. I just love to see things restored. Right. We're trying to restore neighborhoods. We're trying to redevelop areas that haven't yeah. been getting any love, right? We want to rebuild Black Wall Street. We want to bridge the wealth gap predominantly in this neighborhood by helping African Americans. That just don't have the funds to maintain their home. Yeah. We've got all these applicants. And we've been able to help how many families now? We've been able to help 12 families 12 so far. 12 families. I studied racism. I studied white supremacy. Specifically started to learn about the massacre of 1921. There were hundreds of black people killed by white mobs. There were white men and boys who were deputized, given guns by the Tulsa police, and told to go and get a black person using the N-word going, shoot. The fires were all to cover up the looting and the murders. And then I learned that the city immediately started passing fire codes so that black people would have a harder time building their homes back. And when I learned that story, I realized if white people that looked like me burned 1,256 homes in one day, June 1st, 1921, then over the next 10 years, White people should be involved in helping to rebuild 1,256 homes. The applications, so I know that we have a lot of them, but we've been narrowing it down. Well, all of them are great, but a few of them stood out to us. Yeah. Like, I think Rachel Walker. Oh, yeah. Rachel Walker stands out, because you remember seeing in her app, she didn't have an HVAC system. That's so right. She, somebody who complained to the city about homes that were substandard. Huh and her home was one of those homes. Then people were trying to get those condemned and then put on auction, wow. and she had to fight for her home. There was a meeting held down at City Hall, and they had pictures of people's homes in this neighborhood, rated poor, fair, and in good condition. And that picture of my house was from five years ago. My house doesn't look like that anymore. Wow. So they were ready to execute on intimate domains and take people's property wow. and displace them. Wow. If they take my house, where am I going to go? This home was passed down from generations. There was nothing that was going to stop her from keeping her home and also maintaining it. OK, so I noticed there's no stove. How have you been cooking? So I use my hot plate, my air fryer, my little toaster oven. Um, if it's something that I can't do with those, then I just go to my mom's house. OK. That part of her story really stuck out to me. I agree. Yeah. I'm excited to see her reaction and what she does with the funds. You got that one? Okay. You got the check? Yes, ma'am. All right, let's go. All right. Hello, hey, Rachel. Hey, it's Amber with 1256. We just stopped by, we had a quick question for you. Can you come out? We have a question about your archway. Okay. 
Okay. Man, she's gonna be so hyped. One, two. Congratulations! <laughs> Rachel, so you have been accepted as an applicant. We are conveying a $10,000 reparation payment to you from 1256 Movement. Oh my God. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Congratulations. I'm really excited to be chosen as one of the recipients of the $10,000. I just can't believe that they chose me out of all the applicants and all the people who are also deserving of this opportunity. Your story just touched all of us, especially yeah. me being a mother as well. And what you've done to keep up this house that has been passed down to you yeah. so that you can then pass it down to your future generations means so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm also appreciative that people are paying attention to what was done to the generations before me and choosing to take a stand and to do something to fix it instead of just letting it go on for more generations to come. I know my grandfather would be happy to see me doing this, and I know he would be happy to see people like you helping me get this achieved. One day, this will be my daughter's house, so I'm awesome. sure she's gonna be grateful even in the future. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you so much. I'm glad we could help. And I'm excited to see the progress. Yeah, me too. So I'm yeah, to I can't wait to see what I like and get achieved. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Coming up. So we're here to help. Let me show you the kitchen. Okay. This is my headache right now. <laughs> we have some we have some planning to do. But we gotta do something for her. I can't wait to see what they have for me. Oh my god, I love her. Amber and Chuck found a recipient to gift the $10,000 grant to. Recipient seems like a really cool person, Rachel. Yes. Right? So we're on our way to meet her now. I can't wait to meet her and see, A, how she's going to use the $10,000 yeah. to, you know, update our home, right. and B, what we can do to add to that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I also, because there's so many applicants, I want to hear her story. What, what makes her house stand and her out. story yeah. stand out. We've been told that Rachel needs to update a lot of the major systems of her house. The plumbing, the electrical, HVAC, sewage. Yeah. So that $10,000 will go really fast. Yeah, so we're here to see if we can contribute anything that will actually help take away from that budget. We want to maximize that 10000 to the fullest. Absolutely. You know, if, in every capacity. Hey, Amber. Hey, hey. how are y'all? Good, good, good to see you. See you. So good to see Thank you. Meeting us here. Yes. This house is so cute. Isn't it? I love it. So it has a lot of rich history. The owner, Rachel yes. Walker, she's an amazing person, a mother, a homeowner of this home that has been passed down oh, from beautiful. her grandfather and was previously owned by her great aunt. Wow. So she's trying to make an impact and pass down this house to, to her, her daughter. daughter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Respect it's, it's, yeah, and it's a beautiful yeah. looking house. So exactly. to, to keep that going would be amazing. Yeah. She has a lot of updates and main mechanical things that okay. she mm -hmm. needs in her home. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. We're here to help. So hopefully there's some yep. stuff we can pitch in and, yes. and make some things happen for you. Yes, so, certainly. You want to go check it out? Yeah. Let's go meet let's her. Go meet I'm yes. excited to meet her. Let's yes, go. let's go. All right. I am excited. Hey, Rachel. Hello. How are you? You? Good. You remember I told you about the designers? Mm -hmm. Well, we're here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mary and John. Nice Rachel. to meet you. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. We were hoping to come in and tour your home. Okay, come on in. Yeah. All right. Ooh. I'll leave y'all to it. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Wow, the high man. It's, this so is nice very too. deceiving. Yeah. From the outside. Like, Thank I didn't you. anticipate seeing such high ceilings. I know. Wow. So how old is this house? It was built in 1937. Wow. Very cool. Yes. So we're here to help, right? So Give us your wish list. Like, if, um, if money wasn't an issue, oh. what would you want? OK, let me show you the kitchen. OK. Let's check it out. God, All this right. is a big space. It really yeah. is. Oh, my goodness. This is my headache right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Okay. Um, if money wasn't an issue, I would pull the bottom cabinets and just replace those and redo the flooring because it's it's messed up. Okay. 
This is as far as I've gotten. Okay. This wall. This wall right here. Right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you open that up to create a pass through so you're not in here alone. Mm -hmm. You can be a part of the conversation. Yes. Gotcha. And so I see right now you have your countertops here mm -hmm. and your cooktop looks like it's over there in the corner. Is that right? Like Makeshift. Yeah. Makeshift. All right. <laughs> that is actually for the refrigerator. Right. But it's too wide, so if I put it right there, I can't open the back door. Right. That's right. So you okay. need like a counter depth, a counter depth fridge. refrigerator. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. And then your cabinets. So you talked about the cabinets being yes. original to the house. So I love this antique look. Yeah. Yes, it's so charming, and it just really tells the story of the home. I love that you would want to continue to tell what your part of the story. Mm -hmm. So would you want to keep these upper cabinets? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. That's definitely good to know. Me being a child going there with my grandfather when he owned it as a rental property, I saw the home transform several times. I remember the cabinets being different colors in between uh, different tenants. And then now as I'm coming into making changes, I get to see it once again transform into something else. And then what about the bottom cabinets? I want these going as soon as possible. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of projects going on in here. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're going to do is kind of think about it, wrap our heads around and see where okay. we can be the most effective and also useful to you as well. Um, but this is this is a great space. It really thank is. You. Well, thank you so much for showing You're us. You're welcome. Thank we you. really appreciate it. I'm extremely excited for John and Mary who do this for a living, who can give me great ideas on what I can do to the home. It's always a blessing to get free consultations uh, from professionals. All right, we'll see you later, all right? All right, take it easy. I can't wait to see what they have for me. Oh my God, I love her. She is amazing, and her house is amazing. I was yes. really surprised to walk in and see how high the ceilings were, right? Well, the house from the exterior already, you know, it's closed really cool. at my yeah. heart because mm -hmm. I love the arches, I love the brick. Well, we gotta figure it out. I mean, this is a generational home, yep. but now she's trying to make it her own. Right. So how can we help her do that. There's all kinds of projects that need to be done. We've got the cabinets. Yeah. The uppers need to be redone because she wants to save them. I love that, by That's the way. That's what's fantastic. I actually am pretty relieved because yeah. it has like those curves and it's all the way up to the ceiling. Right. And, and it's in great shape. I mean, that wood they used back then, it stands the test of time. So yeah. it's something we can do there, but she wants to redo the bottom cabinets. She wants to take those out and do those yeah. over. So that means if we take out the lower cabinets, we'll have to also do the countertop, but then that means we also need a sink, we also need a faucet, we also need hardware. It it just starts to like add up very, very quickly. It adds up right. very quickly. Okay, we have some, we have some planning to do. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff we going gotta on. We got to do something. For we got to do something. All right, well let's uh, let's go home, grab a drink, and figure it out. Crunch some numbers. Crunch some numbers. All right, with a drink. <laughs> with a drink. It's always. Always a drink. Always. <laughs> Coming up on rebuilding Black Wall Street. Hey, so let me show you here. We got the cabinets coming out. And the only thing is, we'll have to look at replumbing. Some of these pipes are need might need pecs. I'll let you take it, Steven. All right, so <laughs> Maddie, you didn't get too wet. <laughs> They've already put some half-inch plywood here, so we'll. We we'll, might put a hardy backer, some of the that, uh, or a, a concrete board here to make it more, more waterproof. While y'all do that, I'm gonna call Amber, let her know what's going on. Hey, so let me show you here. We took out the sink, and as you can see back here, we've got some of that lath from the plaster that we'll have to cover up. Then we got the cabinets coming out. And the only thing is, we'll have to look at replumbing. Some of these pipes are need might need pecs. Yep, so. To be relatively inexpensive, right? No. Uh, there's there's a lot of things going on. We also have the backsplash. What do you think? Should we go ahead and take all that tile off? Yeah. Okay. We got a sledgehammer. We'll, we'll take that to the tile a little bit. Okay. And just making sure we don't disturb the cabinets above it. That work? All uh, right. Well, we'll be there. Okay. See you then. All right.
nice see to meet you, you. John, John Phil, nice pleasure. to meet you. My pleasure. And seeking to learn everything we can about Greenwood, two names consistently come up, Victor Lukerson and Bill White. These are two folks we definitely need to talk to. We want to hear all about the history. What we've figured out in this short amount of time we've been here is we're more inspired by what people like yourselves are doing. Yeah, you know, you guys are doing some really cool things. So please, please tell us about it. So uh, I'm the executive director of the historic Greenwood District Main Street. Okay. I'm a strong believer in not just talking about what we want to do, but actually doing what we need to do in order to prove the area. Right. Well, not just black people can know about the history, but white people as well. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. That's, that's great, man. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Victor, what about yourself? Uh, I'm a journalist and an author, and I actually moved here to work on a book about the history of Greenwood. Okay. Uh, you know, so many folks only learn about the race massacre. But yeah. Greenwood's story is not just about that one day. Right. This community has existed for more than 110 years. Yeah. You know, so it's been wow. really interesting to be here during so much uh, change and tumult, but also so much inspiration for yeah. um, what Greenwood can be in the future. Yeah. Right. We've learned since that, you know, uh, Black Wall Street was rebuilt and the area was rebuilt. And then we've, we've heard this term a couple of times, urban renewal, right? And the desegregation of, of that area. What did that encompass? Like, how did it go from Black Wall Street being being rebuilt to then all of a sudden it being dissolved? What was that? What was that like, and how did that occur? I mean, really, it's a story that begins right after the race massacre. Okay. So you know, we know we know that Greenwood was destroyed. One thousand two hundred fifty-six homes were destroyed. Hundreds of businesses were destroyed, and the community did rebuild. But they had to rebuild, in some cases, in a very ramshackle way, right? Mm -hmm. So you would see 30s, 40s, 50s. Some of these buildings that are rebuilt were from this hasty reconstruction right afterwards. Gotcha. So that happens first. Because they never got any restitution for what happened during the race massacre, you fast forward a few decades, now it's a blighted neighborhood. Right. And now there's sort of a rationalization for destroying it. Um, in my research, actually, I went to the um, Urban Renewal Authority archives in Tulsa, and you can find documents, they're planning documents from the Urban Renewal Authority calling black neighborhoods parasites. Mm. On the oh, wow. wow. And sort of creating a rationalization to destroy it, quote unquote, for your own good. So I think one of the key things that people have to realize um, is how important voting was right. and is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Without Absolutely. a lot of the a lot of things that it took place in Greenwood was the folks could not vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if you don't have if you don't vote or can't vote, don't have a voice. You cannot. You don't have a voice. Right. You right. cannot determine your future. Right. right. So right. I think everyone. I don't care what you have to do. You need to at least vote, register, vote. A lot of times we talk about voting, but we don't. There's no knowledge behind the vote, mm -hmm. right? You don't even know what you're voting for. You right. think you're voting for one thing, but you may be getting something totally different, right? Yeah. I think mean, that's a really key component of it. When it's presented to the to the public, it was presented in a positive light. That's something that was going to benefit people. Mm -hmm. Right. But that did not happen because um, the money for rebuilding was never provided. So there's a raising raising that happens, mm -hmm. but then we don't get the rebuilding. And these neighborhoods can never really rebuild the way they could because of redlining, yeah. unfortunately. It happens in such small increments that the story doesn't get told mm -hmm. in one encompassing piece, which is why we're so happy to be a part of this, because we yeah. can tell these different parts of the story. So right. thank yeah. you guys for what you're doing. Yeah, man. well, welcome to Tulsa. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome yeah. to Black Wall Street. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to have you guys here. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. Coming up. Well, we only have two days, really. Wow. I know. Surprise. That's all we have. Oh, Rachel yeah. will be out of the house. Oh, uh, yeah. That's refrigerator. That's a, that's a huge refrigerator. Hold on, man. Oh, heck no. Hold on, man. This is not the right fridge. This ain't the right fridge. It's here. Sure? We don't have time for this. Thank you for meeting us. Thank yeah. you. So fill us in. Okay, let me show you. Okay. John and Mary wanted to get to know a little bit more about me and my family. So I invited them to meet my daughter and me where I spent the early years of my childhood and then tell them a little bit more about my family. Where we are walking right now, uh -huh. this is where my grandfather's business was. Wow. Mm -hmm. For 56 years, my grandfather ran a dry cleaners and laundry named Farley's Cleaners. His original business was on Greenwood. Gotcha, okay. And he was required to move from there. So wow. that's how he ended up here mm. on Peoria. My grandfather's first location, he had to move because they brought in the university. His second location, he had to move because they decided to widen the streets. Everything that you see down here, 
where there's nothing. It used to be businesses and homes all up and down this street. When they came to widen the streets, all the homes and the businesses were required to move. Wow. And as you can see, they weren't replaced. Yeah. The location that's behind us, that's the third location and final location of where my grandfather's business was. Wow. Mm -hmm. Man, so they just, they basically just, uh, what is that called? That's called... Intimate domain. Intimate, imminent, mm. imminent domain, that's yes. right. For many black families impacted by the so-called urban renewal policies of the 1960s and 70s, it wasn't just their homes that were taken. It was also their businesses and their livelihoods. The government took ownership of privately owned real estate for public purposes in exchange for, quote, unquote, fair compensation. After the land was cleared, local government sold it to real estate developers at below market prices, destroying whatever equity the original black owners had built in the property and forcing another generation to start all over again. This is so weird to me. They widen the street, but then there's all of this. Like, to me, it just seems like there could have been Another a better way. way to do it. Was your family compensated for that? Yes, but not enough. Gotcha. Because the building that's set here was debt free. The wow. building over there, he had to go into debt to build that to building. Build wow. Yes. So when he decided to close, he closed with debt from mm. that building. Oh. That business was very dear to my family. That's how I grew up, seeing my family every day. That's all we knew. It's a generational thing. It's right. happened three times within our family. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. Right. But we're not the only people that this has happened to. All right. So yeah. that's like the main reason why all the opportunities I've had to sell my home, I haven't. Right. I know that I'm not benefiting from generational wealth in the way that my grandparents intended because their intention was for us to inherit the business that they ran for 56 years, but that didn't happen. So now we're starting from ground level. So the city of Tulsa has began to do honorary street signs. Okay. And if you look past the corner, the first street over there, that's actually my grandfather's honorary street sign. What? Wow. Talk about putting some respect on the name. Yes. Uh, okay. So if you want to go see it, yes. you can walk Absolutely. over there and Let's take a look at it. For sure. Okay. That's, That's dope. Super cool. And this really lets me know the significance that her grandfather played Absolutely. In, in the history of Tulsa. And really, his really name cool. will live there forever. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Telling yeah. those stories so that these things are not forgotten. Yeah. There it is. Wow. wow. LJ Farley, sing your way. There so, is. Why did they pick this street? Is this is this the street that he was, that his house was on? Yes, his home is down the street, and then there were other family members, uh, Farleys, who also had properties going down the street. Gotcha. Okay. okay, man, this is super cool. I've never met anybody whose name is on the street. They recently put it up, and um, they are just now starting like. Uh, plans on getting a dedication ceremony together. Wow. So eventually, that should happen. That's really cool. Well, I mean, most dedications come with like pictures and stuff like that. So we should mm -hmm. probably take a picture. Oh, okay. Yeah. This, yeah. this is it's a really it's really big cool. Moment. Yeah, this it's is really cool. cool. Come on, I'm, I'm gonna come. Y'all turn around. Okay. Everybody, say cheese. Cheese. This is Johnson. Boom. How are you? Hey. Say what's up. Man. Yes. He's our helper for today. There yes. we go. <laughs> I love it. So, so what do we have? Give us a breakdown what we're right. working with. So the schedule is, well, we only have two days, really. Wow. I know. Surprise. Yes. That's all we have, where okay. Rachel will be out of the house. OK. We have some volunteers through 1256. Awesome. OK. We'll okay. need your help and your expertise with the cabinets, all, right. all of that. Furniture. Yes. In two days. Let's go. Two days. All right. We can do it. All right. So yeah, I definitely can help out. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty good with my hands. I got, I brought my tools, a lot of carpentry things. Perfect. So if you got, you know, a busher block or any wood elements that need to be yes. done, I definitely would jump in and help out. And Johnson said he's coming with me. So okay. there, there we go. go. There we go. Okay. 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 <laughs> let's rock this out. Let's then. do it. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. Man, I'm super happy to get started on the projects because we got to put it in overdrive. <laughs> a lot to do. Man. Hey, you. Hi. Oh, man. All right, I just want 
to give you guys an update on where we are. Like, everything is looking good. Cabinet color is beautiful, but now we just have to do all the finishing touches, mm -hmm. which, of course, to me, I feel take the longest. Mm -hmm. Hardware, finishing up the beadboard, and then furniture's coming in, okay. including appliances. Okay. So you, you're telling us that we need to move fast? A double time. Double time. Yeah. All right. look, look how little. I don't know how to. Oh, oh, here, let me help and you. And my hammer pants. <laughs> and your hammer pants got on. Let me, let me help you up. Let me help you up. I don't want to rip them. Oh. <laughs> All right, she, she put it on us, so let's get to it. We good? Yeah. All right. Coming up. Are you guys ready? You nervous? Yes. To y'all. Oh, they're here, they're here. Come on in, hey. Hey guys, come on in here. What you got? I think, I actually think I could make these curtains work, but I'm too short, see? Yeah. So I'm thinking we still hang the curtains. Can you see if it's uh, not how high we can go? That's how high you can go? Yeah, for well, to touch the bottom. Fine. There's this beautiful kitchen window that is right in the center of her cabinets. And Rachel wanted to keep those upper cabinets. Yep. Like, she loves the upper cabinets. So I had this idea to take some of the old cabinet doors mm -hmm. and make them into a window balance. Let's see. Let's see well, if we just has to come off in order to get that. But that'll give us that. This would actually be cool. How many times do you think this cab these cabinets have oh, been painted? Oh, man. I got blue, so have you found blue? <laughs> oh, my oh. God. Look at that. There's blue Two here, different too. Blues. Wow. Blue, green, old 70s green. Yeah. It tells the story of the home. It's yeah. a part of the home's history. So why not reuse this cabinet door, yeah. cut it down, and make it the perfect size for this window? We'll make it. <gasps> Where we at? 48? 48. Perfect. It'll make it. Yeah, line. It'll make it. Good. Ooh, teamwork. Makes the dream work. Nice. Yes, sir. It's just another piece of the story that she gets to continue to tell. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. It's like you know me. It's only, as only, if you only, know me. Only 14 years. Actually, more than 14. You know what? That deserves a kiss. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mwah. Very nice. Appliances that we ordered. Okay. okay. They're here. They just rolled in, so let's get it going. Okay, All perfect. Right. Well, I'm gonna leave you to put the brackets on. All that right. way we can hang the curtains and I will assist them. Assist them. All right, cool. Here. There we go. All right, cool. With the money that we're giving Rachel from 1256, we can finally tackle those big ticket items like replacing her hot water tank. Yes. And also getting those plumbing repairs done. We're also getting her all new appliances. I can't wait till she sees them. All right. Bring it. Bring it. Oh, oh yes, yeah, refrigerator. That's a that's a huge refrigerator. Hold on, man. Oh heck no. Hold on, man. This is not the right fridge. This ain't the right fridge. This is way this too big for what we're trying to do. Go ahead and put that down, man. Let me make a call real quick, man. This is crazy. It's huge. We don't have time for this. The wrong size refrigerator was delivered. Yes. When I tell you this is a catastrophe, we just don't have any time for any mess ups right, right now. I understand this, man. Hello? Hey, um, I just got a refrigerator and it is the wrong refrigerator. We ordered a counter depth refrigerator and we have a standard here. We, we, we gave you guys the refrigerator that you, that you asked for. This is not the refrigerator that we asked for. You know, you do do a lot of business. Let me, let me see what we can do and get this, get this thing resolved. Please, quickly. and make it happen fast, please. Thank you. We just need the right refrigerator, and we need to get it done immediately. Hello. Hey, Rachel, it's Amber. I just wanted to check in with you to confirm the time that you will be coming tomorrow at 3 o'clock, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. OK. Um, that might be a little too soon. Like 6.30. 6.30? OK, that will work. We just want to make sure that you're able to see everything, and we're trying to wrap up and get everything done, but we need a little bit more time. OK, I'll be there. All right, see you then. All right, y'all. So I bought us some more time, and she'll come at 6.30. 6.30, all right. Now we can actually drink water. Woo! To wrap things up. Thankfully, 
think the right refrigerator has arrived <laughs> and it actually fits. But we're gonna have to hurry up on these last pieces because she could show up any minute. Thank you. <laughs> Are you guys ready to yes. go inside? Are you nervous? Yes. Come on in. Hey. Hey. So nice in this face. Mm -hmm. Are you guys ready to go inside? Are you nervous? Yes, very. Come on in. Hey, you gotta see, of course, the kitchen. This is very pretty. Okay, this is from the cabinet. You yeah. saw it? Yes. <laughs> it looks very nice. Look. Yeah. <laughs> How you like the new How fridge? How you like the new fridge? Good. The major surprise for me was definitely the refrigerator because the one I had before, it was too wide to fit in the actual space. There. She was very concerned uh -huh. about our food. <laughs> <laughs> to walk in and then see a brand new one in the space was definitely a shock. So you saw some of the process when you were here, but mm -hmm. we did the floors. Oh. I really like these floors. All throughout. Got you some new cabinets. Because I the other these. ones were damaged from yes. the water damage that you had. I just speechless. Oh. <laughs> just going back from the beginning, mm -hmm. for how you've maintained this property that was passed down to you from generations. Mm -hmm. And you were working as much as you can doing DIY projects yeah. to maintain. <laughs> and obviously, we selected you to help, um, to help do all of this. Replacing all of the flooring. Yes, I love this flooring. doing your whole kitchen. <laughs> It looks wonderful. I mean, I love this house, and you've put so much love and care already into it. And yeah, I heard you love blues, so we yes. wanted to go with the naval blue cabinets with some brass hardware. You already had the quartz countertop, so we matched it with the beadboard. And because, I mean, you have beadboard all over your house. You have it on the front porch. Yeah. You have it outside over here in your laundry room. Yeah. So we brought that in for your backsplash as well. I like that. One of the things that I really loved about this house was all the character, right? Yeah. So it was cool to bring in, like, saving pieces. We love the fact that you wanted to save the upper cabinets because yes. they've been there mm -hmm. forever. And so to kind of find a way to reorganize and make a, a balance out of old cabinet was yes. just like a little touch to kind of bring it all together. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that your family had such a big part of just preserving and keeping this home through many, yeah. many generations, right? I'm feeling overwhelmed. Yes. <laughs> it's so much to take in, but yes. I love the, the final product. You do? Yes. I do. Do you yes. see yourself in here now? You can cook on this gas yes. range. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. flows so beautifully. It does. Your, so you can still look outside, have a space for your plants, which yes. I know you love. Yes. Look right here, there's a little area. You know, they really, really did a phenomenal job keeping you guys in mind and how you would live. And we're just so glad that you love it. Listen, yeah. your story was a blessing yes. to us. And it's yeah. a blessing that we were a part of your journey in giving you this product. I am just amazed at your family for looking and keeping a house in the family yeah. to help with generational wealth. I think that they would be extremely proud yeah. that I've held on to it. Yes. Um, yeah. Considering like the many offers I get. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking they'd be extremely proud. I think that they would love the space as well because it is laid out so beautifully. Yes. Um, and I'm, I know my grandmother would love this gas stove. Oh, she cooked awesome. a lot, and my daughter can stop telling people when I'm not cooking. <laughs> um, she was actually asking me what I was cooking tonight. Wow. <laughs> No breaks. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> to officially break in the new kitchen, I decided to host a dinner. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you and acknowledge your presence right now in this space. Lord, we bless this house. We bless this family right now, Lord. And we ask that you continue to be with them. And we bless this food that we're about to eat. 
And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's dig in. Ain't no waking about him home. I'm eating it. That's how it was. Wait for us. He went to wait for us. That's your old word. That was your old word? No. no, no. no? Oh, okay. No, listen, no. y'all. <laughs> she, yeah. she, gonna, she gonna try to bring out all the business all the time for everybody. We know Maya was ready for her first home-cooked meal Absolutely. back at their house. Yeah. And the fact that Rachel shared that meal with us was really, really special. Yeah, super cool. I am extremely appreciative there are people who genuinely help out of the kindness of their heart. I like that you took your time out and did everything how my mama liked it just to make her happy. Given the scope of everything to be accomplished, this is a small but rewarding victory in the goal of rebuilding Black Wall Street. But it has had an outsized generational impact on this family and serves as an inspiration to the team to continue their quest to help as many descendants as possible. Next time on Rebuilding Black Wall Street. What was it about this home that made you select it? I think the home selected me. For me to be able to open a home to house women who are formerly incarcerated, yeah. it's everything to me. We got some problems. We ran it out of paint. We have to bust out the tub, the concrete. Then we have termites. It's costing us money that we don't have. We only have room for so many women. So we're really gonna have to make some tough decisions.